So my name is Gustavo Mostoslavsky, and I am assistant professor of medicine and microbiology, and I also the uh, co-director of the Center for Regenerative Medicine. And the center is part of the Boston University School of Medicine and Boston Medical Center. So my laboratory is uh, affiliated with a section of gastroenterology in, as part of the Department of Medicine and is involved in uh, doing research that has to do with uh, pluripotent stem cells, which is something I'm sure um, everyone in the CREM uh, talks about because this is a major focus of the, of the center of the CREM. So we work with pluripotent stem cells as a way for us to study different diseases, mostly diseases that has to do with the gastrointestinal system. So gut diseases and liver diseases. So I grew up in Argentina. I was born in a, in a city called Tucumán in the north of Argentina. It has a big, uh, it's, a, it's a relatively big uh, uh, city in the center of the north of Argentina, so there are big universities. And when I was finishing my secondary school, I was very always very curious. I used to read a lot of physics, and I was a big fan of uh, Albert Einstein. We have a lot of pictures here. Um, but I wasn't sure that I wanted to do physics. It was a little bit too abstract for me. So after uh, looking into many different other things, I got really into biology and started to understand what's, what's going on basically in the human body. So one, one of the diseases that we work on is a disease that has to do with mutations in a gene called APC. But um, it's very important because it's one of the most important genes related to colon cancer. So we try to study colon cancer in a petri dish by using these pluripotent stem cells that we can make from patients that have mutations in this gene APC, or we can create the mutation. These days there are incredible uh, uh, toolbox for, for modifying genes, and we use these uh, tools to create the mutations ourselves, and then we go and make these pluripotent stem cells and try to use these stem cells to create, in this case, intestinal organoids, it's called, which is basically like trying to recreate a gut in a petri dish. And by doing so, then we're trying to better understand why a cell become a cancer, what are uh, the cellular events, the molecular events, and, and we basically try to do all that while also uh, having fun in the lab. In the long term, we are big believers of these iPS cells, and we believe that for the first time, really for the first time in biomedical history, we have access to these cells that, in general, they, they don't exist normally in nature. I mean, we don't have pluripotent stem cells in our bodies. But through this discovery of, of uh, Dr. Yamanaka in 2006, now we can create those cells in, in, in the lab. And now we have access to pluripotent stem cells from any individual. And we have the, the chance for the first time to take these cells and basically go into any direction to create any, any tissue or any organ. And that's really have unlimited uh, potential to, to the use of these cells in the future, hopefully also for regenerative medicine. Because the idea would be that you can now create pluripotent stem cells from an individual with any disease. And now, if that person has a disease of the gut or a disease of the liver, and you want to fix the disease of that individual. We have now the tools to go to these cells and fix the genetic mutation. You can do that now. It takes a few weeks, but you can now do something that was impossible to do before. You can correct the mutation in those cells of these patients, and now you can take those cells and make the tissue or the organ, like a liver or a gut, from this individual, except that the mutation doesn't exist anymore. So you can probably that's what we hope, that in 20, 30 years, maybe 100 years, we will be able to make a liver or a gut of this individual that has no mutation. So it's basically it's a healthy organ, but it's his own organ because it's coming from his own cells. So he will receive the cells basically as his own, but without a disease anymore. That's, a, that's a, the long-term dream that we have. Doing research in the lab basically gives you the chance to do something that is exciting every day that you have a lot of fun because you can really think a lot about what you're doing in terms of, wow, wouldn't it be great you know, to, to answer this question in, in biology, right? In, in research in biology. And, and it's basically coming every day, uh, not knowing what to expect from the experiment you did the, the day before, or 
not knowing if what you thought is going to happen is going to be really what happened. And no matter what happened, in general, that answer is it's a result. So even if the result is not what you expect, or even if the result is, is what you're looking for, both cases are still great, because you're always going to learn something new.